go. All right, everyone. I am so excited to see you for this week's association chat. I have my holiday red on. And how is everybody feeling? What's going on this week? Why don't you type into the chat box on the side for those who are watching live. I like to make sure that I do a quick mic check to make sure that everyone can hear me and that we're not having any issues tech wise. Hey, 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 I see you, Lara, Beth, of course. I can't wait to have you on in a second. Lowell, great to see you. EB, love you. Okay, great. I am so excited. Oh, there's my sound. Hey, hey. I am so excited to have you guys on today. Uh, this is a really special episode because there's so much that's been going on and uh, just came back from some exciting stuff. Last week, uh, ASAE had their tech conference. And then I got to be a part of a really cool thing that, that ASAE is doing, the XDP, it's experiential design, so experience design. And uh, they, they're totally transforming what they're doing with uh, their meetings and starting with this whole XDP project. So lots and lots of fun stuff. I actually want to get them on to talk a little bit more about XDP and some of their work with 360 Live Media. But before I get too far into the weeds about what's been going on in my life, I want to talk to you about what we're here to talk about this week. And we have some amazing stuff that, uh, you know, that's been going on. One person that I saw last week at Tech is a very special person. She's here with us today, and she is um, known by everyone as uh, Beth Z, or your nerdy best friend. And I am so excited to talk with her about the apps of a leader. I'm gonna pull her on in a second. But if this is your first time joining Association Chat, welcome. Welcome to this edition of Association Chat, which is your weekly online discussion for the association community where we warm ourselves by the toasty fire with topics of the day, welcoming thought leaders and trailblazers alike to join up in this online home for the community. I'm your host, Kiki Letalien, CEO of Amplified Growth Digital Marketing and host of this weekly chat that's been around since 2009. So for this week's show, what makes a leader? Is it in their genetics? Is it in all the seemingly small tasks that they do each day? Or is it in the apps that they have on their phones? We don't know, but we're gonna talk a little bit more about it. Um, as we explore the different apps of a leader, we are going to be talking with the fabulous Beth Z. And Beth, you know, here's the deal. I have to admit it, I've heard you pronounce your name a million times and I still don't think that I get it right. There's her nerd shirt. Look at it. I love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. So, hey, Beth. Hi, guys. All right. Everyone's jealous of your sweater, including me. I am I am jealous of your sweater. And then I added this part. This didn't come with a sweater, but, you know, you need, How, you need a, a rhinestone nerd pin. I mean, before we before I like properly introduce you, can I ask you how much nerd paraphernalia you actually have? Because I bet it's a lot. You kind of don't want to know. It's I'm <laughs> it's it's embarrassing. I mean, I have nerdy rubber ducks on my desk right here. I have um I have nerd like Legos. I have nerd. I have a Viewmaster behind me. Oops, see, this is not oh, Viewmaster. Uh, a Viewmaster, you see that right there behind me too, is a, um, it's an old compact um, floppy disk set that they made into a purse. A floppy disk set that they made into a purse. You see that right here? I, I'm, I am just kind of blown away by that. And so, yeah, that's, that's pretty amazing. So, things. so somebody sent me this. Somebody sent me this this handy glasses holder. Uh, <laughs> I have to put on a hat because now the hair has been messed up and I've been going back and forth about the hat. I have two hats, but I gotta mash this stuff down. All right. I'm All ready. right. 
So no more hat hair concerns. All right. So we're ready to rock. On. So and, and anyone that's listening to this later, um, because, you know, uh, podcast audio version of this, you're not seeing this, but this is a week leading into Christmas. And so we've got some holiday stuff. I've got my red jacket on, but Beth has me beat by far because she's got a fully decked out Christmas sweater and uh, with a reindeer and everything. And so, and a hat and a Santa hat. So, uh, but Beth, okay. So you're known as your nerdy best friend. You're new. This, and everyone, this is your new, if you haven't met Beth before, this is your new nerdy best friend. She is, and she goes by Beth Z because I think I'm pretty sure that everyone constantly mispronounces your last name. Am I right? You are right. I, uh, one of my, uh, my, my practice husband had to keep my business card in his pocket so he would remember how to say it. So you're not alone if you don't get it. Okay. <laughs> so it's, is it Zisinus? It is not. Well, how <laughs> is it? Zisness, kind of like business. Zisness. That's right. Like oh my gosh. Zisness. I don't know why, but you know, people, Zisness. Like the yeah. Zisness. I like it. I like it. Yeah, no, I've heard it. And I think it's because I've heard this discussed so for so many years that I actually forget which way it goes because I've actually heard people go back and forth like this. So if I get it wrong again, just, you know, please forgive me. Um, my last name is atrocious to try to pronounce. So it's like Italian, little alien, Italian. I, I hear it all. So that's totally fine. Um, you know, the thing about Beth is that she she is a speaker, a trainer. She goes all over this God's green earth and talks to people everywhere about and high in demand. Like, I'm really lucky to actually have you on, Beth, because uh, everybody wants to hear from Beth, you know, to find out about what the latest apps are. Um, some of the best ways they can organize their apps. And so what we wanted to talk about today is, is really the apps of a leader. We're going into 2017 and everybody's trying to figure out what they should pay attention to, what they can let go of. And so one of the first things that um, I really wanted to touch on uh, had to do a little bit with this concept of, you know, we're going into the holidays and uh, everyone's going to be taking tons of pictures. And as we're taking lots and lots of pictures of family and the holiday parties and all of this stuff. Um, you know, a lot of people are going to be running into space issues. And so over time, I have come to view the organization of photos as just one of those things I'm never going to quite grasp. Like I'm, I just have to like give up on the idea that I'll ever really own that. So do you have any tips for us on the best way to organize your photos going, going, especially going into this holiday season? Well, uh, and I, by the way, I just want to address some folks are saying there's a video lag and there's some weird stuff. I don't look very good anyway. So if <laughs> the screen is frozen and I have a yeah. cute look on my face, that's good. Just stay with that. We're hoping. Yep. Uh, we'll just so visualize. We'll visualize while the screen is frozen. Yeah. I think the most important thing is that we can hear you. So, so um, one, there's just been some amazing things that are happening in the video collection, uh, photo collection world. And I'm really excited about some of the things, but they're going to creep some people out because in order for some of these things to work, they're looking at your photos. They're understanding what's in your photos. They're putting context into your photos. They're recognizing faces in your photos. They're putting them together and they're taking control of what basically you would do if you would have time. But to do that, they're using deep learning, deep knowledge, deep data, deep all kinds of stuff. And if you're concerned about privacy, this is an area of concern. So let's talk positive first and then talk about why this could be a concern for privacy. Google Photos is insane. Yeah, I know. Is beyond awesome. So it's always been it's been around for a long, long time, and um, you could always you know upload photos. Now they have unlimited photo storage and video storage for free forever. 
So that's outside of your regular allowance for Google Drive. You can have unlimited storage for photos and all kinds of things. Here's where it gets different. So you upload all your photos, hundreds of years worth of family photos or whatever. Google goes through them and can recognize different people and you can search by different people. Oh, wow. He's, he's 10 or 11 now. It can see him as an infant. See him all wow. the way through and will find all those wow. photos without being tagged. You know, that's the thing I wondered about. I was like, how do, so what about the ages? Cause like with my daughter, she's eight and going on like 18. And uh, I, I'm like, well, what about my daughter? Will it recognize her as an, from an infant to now? And you're saying, yes. Yes, it's, it's doing this, it's doing groups of people, it's doing locations. So that trip to, you know, if you went to New Orleans, you can search for New Orleans and find all the photos from your New Orleans trip. You don't have to know the dates. It'll have the geotags in there. You can search That's for really the scary. <laughs> yeah, you can search for the word cat and every picture that has a cat in it will come up. It's funny because one time uh, I was showing this and I searched for the word cat in my own photos and it's scary because it's an automatic upload. So all those goofy face pictures you take, um, I'm sorry, I'm not Anthony Weiner. All mine are just goofy face pictures. <laughs> there but sometimes I get one of those where I'm going like hey eh, at the camera and so wow. I, I show this in session sometimes and, and these weird things come up but one time I was searching for cat and there was this picture that didn't have a cat in it and I'm like see it's it wrong sometimes and, and the audience member said nope look down and there was a cat that happened to be walking by in the background in this one picture oh my god the cat so it's finding animals it's finding objects it's finding all kinds of things it's grouping them Here's another thing. Wouldn't it be great if you were a great scrapbooker and could put all those things into cute things and give cute things to cute people to tell them how wonderful your family is? Well, you don't because you don't have time. Google does it for you. Facebook is doing it for you. Your Apple phone is doing it for you. They're taking little vignettes from your life and making these yeah. tiny little videos and tiny little clips and tiny little montages without you knowing and doing it and giving it to you like a gift. And Google, it's called Google Assistant, I think, and Google Photos Assistant. But Microsoft is doing it as well. I think Microsoft is. Um, Apple is for sure. Facebook is. And it's because they're understanding the context. They're understanding the timing. They're understanding the things. So let's talk about why that's so bad. Um, <laughs> Can we? I mean, as you know, like I've been married for over 11 years and I can imagine that if I were dating, there's some things that I probably wouldn't want to be reminded of or to have commemorated scrapbook style. So, yeah, let's discuss. Yeah. <laughs> yeah um, well, that's one weird thing that happens is that, uh, you know, my mom died about three years ago and it still collects all of her pictures together and it still kind of creeps me out. Um, uh, Beth says, and it hasn't figured out divorce yet either. Oh. Right. <laughs> yeah. Facebook is always trying to get me to refriend an ex. I'm like, really? Is that yeah. such a good idea? It didn't work for us the first time. <laughs> <laughs> but here's one of the things. Some of you are, are going to be uncomfortable with the whole idea that Google understands who is in your pictures and when and where and what and how. So you can turn that off and you cannot use it. However, other of us are going to be in family pictures that somebody else has uploaded to Google. Mm -hmm. So your face is being recognized by Google more than likely. Now, luckily, here's a sad thing. This is a sad face thing. Google has a separate category for me for my skinny years and my fat years. Do you know what I'm saying? What? You've got yeah, to be kidding. Sometimes they don't put them together. And I'm like, come on, I didn't look that different. And it's not fair. But wait, but how do they, how do they, how do they identify them separately? I mean, they, they identify them as Beth, right? But they don't. Yeah, it's all, and, and it doesn't say my name. It just says, here's a person and here is a person and they're not the same. I'm like, yes, they are. She they just are the same person. Eight more, you big meanie. I know. <laughs> Judge McDudgeon, <laughs> Google uncle person. I know. The people over on this, like everybody in the chat box, they're, they're like, we can't win. We, I know. You know? What the hell? Yeah. Um, but there, it's starting to, um, 
if you don't want this to happen, you are mm -hmm. not in control of other people's photos anymore. So it makes me uncomfortable for people that that concept makes uncomfortable. I know that there is nothing private about me anymore. I'm on, right. you know, uh, Kiki's national channel with a Christmas hat and that's what it is. But um, <laughs> so there's, there's very little out there of mine that, you know, I think is going to be private anyway. But if you're one of those people who really uh, worries about that privacy, you have to be aware that if any of your family members takes Christmas pictures and put them on Google, Google is using all that data it knows about the world to find that, to find out where you are and who you are, connect you, even if they don't your, know your name, it's all connected. So, sorry. <laughs> yeah, you know, and I was, it, it's kind of interesting when, um, you know, as you're taking pictures, I, I didn't even notice in my new iPhone when I got it that I hadn't really explored uh, the photos uh, app for a long time. And that's a whole other, I mean, that's just, it's like a whole new world in there because uh, there's so much, so much capability that I had no idea was still there. So, and Beth, yeah, as far as you're, you're coming out for a second uh, of being frozen screen wise and then, and then the video is freezing up again. So. And, well, I'm yeah. sorry. I just hope that, uh, that I look cute every time I'm frozen. Cause <laughs> it's like, yeah. Um, oh, oh, oh. So anyway, yeah, I, I'm just kind of, uh, letting us capture this special awkward moment of tech difficulty before we move on to the next question. So what, what's a great way for our association chat listeners to, uh, use technology to honor a special employee or volunteer, um, you know, because especially this time of year and then after the new year, a lot of times people are always looking for ways to, to say thank you. They're looking for ways to, um, to show people that they care. And especially for associations, that's very important, whether it's chapter leaders, board leaders, staff. And so, you know, what do you have? Do you have advice for us for that? Well, I'm laid down, uh, and this will be tough because you can only see me in little spurts, which is so strange. I checked my connection, and I'm at like 85 uh, gigamexels. Well, <laughs> that one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm at 85, and I can usually do a live thing at three. So I don't, I don't know what's going. On. It's but probably anyway. the platform. Usually the live streaming platforms, they're they're very funky and buggy and yeah. I don't know. So I am going to just mention the name of this. Y'all can look it up, but if, if you happen to be able to see it, it's awesome. Um, what I love about technology nowadays is it makes it so much easier for us to be kind so quickly and with very little effort. So for example, today, I, um, okay, my family don't, doesn't watch anything that I do, so I don't think I'm going to give you giving it away. But within about five minutes on Amazon, I was able to buy gifts that will be delivered in two days yes. from my phone very quickly to my family with no extra shipping charges, with no whatever, and it's going to be on their table for Christmas. And that's, that's technology. That's all of the technology things coming together with all of the systems they put together. And it's, it's just so much easier to be kind. There's a new site called, uh oh, let me get the name because it's really fun. Oh, spoil, spoil.io. And spoil.io takes advantage, spoil.io takes advantage of the fact that there are so many Ubers and delivery services in all these towns. And it promises little gifts delivered within like a half day. I've sent cupcakes to people. Okay, I sent the cupcake to myself. That's not the point. <laughs> I sent um, little cookies to people. I sent little other gifts to people. You can send flowers. You can send little things. And they cost, you know, $15 or $10 or $5. But it's just like, wow, I want to say thank you to that person. And within no time at all, you can say thank you. And again, that's just technology coming together and doing it called Spoil. I found it um, on a site I love that maybe we can get to some of the places I find these things. Um, these are things that I'm showing you that you may or may not be able to see. This is 
um, Postagram. Now, Instagram, of course, uh, became insanely popular very quickly. And around Instagram grew up all kinds of different businesses that take your pictures and immediately turn them into something that you can share. So Postagram is postcards that for 99 cents mailed. You could snap a picture of your favorite person at the office, just smiling at the desk or whatever, write a little note, put it in the mail. They get it at home. They get it at work with a little thank you saying, I just love the way, I just love what you do. I love how you brighten up the office. I love what you brought to our team. What have you? Mm. 99 cents or less mailed. mailed. Wow. That's and amazing. It, you can't it, even buy amazing. gum or something for like 99 cents. It's crazy. And it tracks it. So it, you know when it gets there. And wow. so I'm sorry, you know, when you're a grateful nephews, don't call you and say, thanks for the thing. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> this one. Um, and again, uh, I, I'm sorry that technology is technology and you might not be able to see it, but um this is a something called felt F E L T mm -hmm. and felt is a card service that lets you do four or so pictures. I'm going to keep holding this up in hopes that I'll freeze in a good spot. Um, four or so pictures that will, that you do in an accordion type card. And oh, wow. and so you can pick up four or so pictures. It comes in a beautiful square, envelope and it just makes an impression felt has a um let's see i think i'm here all by myself all right nope, now i'm here <laughs> am i better sorry yes. uh it, yes that's it feltapp.com yes can felt my, my video going now it, it's going right now, but then it just froze again. But I saw, I see the envelope and it's beautiful. Okay, so this is the felt envelope and it's a beautiful envelope. And then it um, comes into, when you open it up, it's four different, oh, wonderful. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Four different pictures that you up to four as you can do and it looks like a handwritten thing they sometimes do free ones for like um when uh when the supreme court uh decision on um marriage came down they gave away some free ones there they do free ones but the cool thing is for like five dollars a month you can get a subscription and do three of these for just send them a month three of these that's crazy. And they're so cool. You can do these fun little things. I sent a hundred dollar bill through them because that's something they're doing now. Wow. I sent a hundred dollar bill to my, to my manager who is awesome just to thank her and just to try out the thing. Is that mailing three total? Yes. So, um, you can just sign up and have a subscription and for $5 a month, you get to do three of these. If you were to buy these individually, they're like, anywhere from three ninety nine dollars 99 each. So doing- I mean, I don't, how do they scale that? That's insane that they do that. That's amazing and I love it and I'm totally gonna take advantage of it, but I'm just like, wow. Well, it, it gets to be a lot like your, um, your gym membership, not yours, Kiki, mine. <laughs> you're cleaning every month and you haven't been there since, um, what year is this? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, you know, you, you've got those challenges. So. Um, I, I generally make my quota and I just do little things. I do them for my nephews. I do them. Thank you for the people I just spoke for. Uh, I do it for my manager. I do it just fun things just out of the blue and you can just throw some cool cards in there, some thank yous, some pictures of yourself, some whatever, some handwritten notes. And it's, it's so inexpensive. Lara, are you listening to this? I know Lara, who I work with, she, um, yeah, yeah, we, we're totally on this, right? We have to do this. Yeah, I think so. on it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> She's so like, I'm yes. To get locked again on this one. Um, okay. And I can come in, but who knows? Uh, so here are two books that I recommend. Um, one of them is called Mosaic. I think it's called Get Mosaic, is the site yeah. if you want to pull it up. Um, okay. And Get Mosaic will let you for $30. Take a whole bunch of pictures that are on your phone and make this beautiful book. It's like a seven by seven or an eight by eight book. And 
arrange them, send them off. It comes in a beautiful box and it's $30 mailed. And I just love that, you know, say thank you to your team for the last conference, you know, and, and just, oh, yeah. um, or the retiring board member, you know, he's an outgoing board member, send him a note or the education committee or what have you, just little things that you can do very quickly. Um, yeah. And see that box. It's just so elegant. It's so seven by seven, right? Um, Gorgeous. Uh, the photo book from your phone in a snap. It's just, it's just, oh, I see it now on your screen too. I love all the different images. Yes. 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 This one is called chat book. Can you see? That's the one I think you saw of me. Uh, member clicks. I love you. Thank you for always being around. You're wonderful. I know. Member Not clicks. Chat yeah. Chat book. Yeah. Yes. Okay. And these are in here. gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. And you can set it up so that every month you can take photos from your phone and make a book. Oh, wow. Then, these hardcover book. I did these to, uh, as a sample, um, to see what they were like. And I think I might give them away to people for, um, to see what your nerdy best friend is like. I just did it kind of as a promo book. But all this was done, I think I did all this online, but you can do it all from your phone. And it's very quick and it's all just pictures you have and you can send it out. <laughs> I'm enjoying this little ad that they have on the, on the, on the chat book. Oh uh, my God. They're just so elegant. Now this one, I have to brag, my manager is the best manager in the world. And okay. I hope I get locked onto this too. Um, she made me this giant book from Blurb. Okay. I have no idea how much she paid to do this. But this is like a 12 by 12 book that she did with uh, as a gift to me and put beautiful photos. All right. Oh, that's so up. pretty. Wow. Beautiful books. I I, I don't know that. much to say. But just the fact that she did this for me was overwhelming. And so I could imagine if you did this for your staff, if you did this for your conferences, if you did this for your committees, takes very little time in terms of like just doing it on your phone or whatever. And then you send it off and it's just beautiful. Um, brilliant. Yeah, so uh, somebody mentioned Shark Tank. So Shark Tank um, bought on to Felt. They supported Felt, and that's when Felt started doing the subscription models and stuff, too. So that's really cool. And then Shark Tank also did one, and I don't have a sample of this one. It's called Groove Book. This is insane. For $2.99 a month, you can choose 100 pictures from your phone, and every month you get a photo album, a four by six photo, a photo album. It's called Groove Book, G R O O V B O O K. Okay. okay. And uh, they were bought by Shutterfly, but they also were a big success on Shark Tank. And Groove Book is insane. It's two dollars and ninety nine cents a month, and you get this photo album. And look, they're really colorful and fun. And they have a little groove in them because that's the way to make it so that the the pricing is really cheap to send, I guess. Two ninety nine a month, up to a hundred and photos in a four by six, um, and you can pull out the oh, sold. Oh my gosh, I am sold. Tear and share. I am all over that. Yep, and this wow. is great grandparent uh, stuff. This is great. Can you imagine just keeping a running? tab of like things that are happening in the office you know if we're doing this for associations we're doing it for executives just you know kind of a documentation of what happens and every month you've got these these things this was the conference we went to this was the or we put on this was the the um virtual uh, event we did and that kind of thing i cannot get over that that is amazing i know oh my gosh month. but that's like uh the chat books uh, chat books are the same thing. It's like every month yeah. is eight dollars, and it it does that. So yeah. it's a nicer book, but it's eight dollars versus twenty nine. So how do we decide, Beth? How do we decide? Well, oh my god! All of them. So I don't know. <laughs> what am I going to say? I have. I, uh, well, I think that the group books are not as as refined. If you're mm -hmm. giving these as gifts to people, mm -hmm. 
I like the eight dollar one very much. I like the the higher end ones very much. Uh, mm -hmm. Versus the group bookgram. That's for. Can you imagine like all the all the um, awards you're doing? Right, you're doing your awards dinner. You snap the picture of the grip and grin. Put that picture in the mail right that second. I mean, or that's the best. Best. Do you know seconds. how impressive that is? Yeah, seconds. I mean, it, it honestly, you could finish like taking the picture and already be sent and amaze people by yep. how fast they're yep. getting it. Yep, and they feel extra special. It's not like because we've all done the grip and grin uh, picture, and then you put it on the website three weeks later. Let them have that moment and keep that moment and know that they were appreciated. Or the volunteers who have done everything. Yeah. You know, just take a picture of them volunteering and say, we could have not done this event without you, period. And they yeah. get it when they get home from the event. I mean, you know, it's not a word that I use often, and it's not even a word that I'm proud to use. But I feel like with you uh, today, I have to use the word amaze balls. It's really <laughs> amazing. I, it's the first time I've used amaze balls. I'm pretty sure on association chat ever, but I think that this constitutes the use of that word. It, this is crazy. These are really great. I mean, I feel like you couldn't really go wrong too much. It's very thoughtful. Um, it's not that expensive and it's something that allows you to do everything from your phone. So if you're mobile, if you're traveling, like so many association executives are, are road warriors, anyone in this industry, and it's like, you know, oh my gosh, you know, uh, you could be doing this. You could go directly in the middle of walking down the conference hallway as you're leaving to yes. even, you know, you can arrange for this stuff to happen. I love that. That's amazing. Yeah. And that's what I love. And just sharing that immediately, giving them that immediate feedback. I mean, we're all into immediacy anyway. And yeah. And although we're all into digital, people like things. Here I am touching a thing. You can't see me. I don't know what's <laughs> I can't see you. I, I don't know. <laughs> I, my beauty just broke the camera, I guess. It broke the internet. But um, yeah, it's it's really cool. Better you than Kim Kardashian. So hey, 2016. <laughs> all right. Um, so, okay. So we have some really great ways to not just honor special employees or volunteers, but we have a lot of great ways to you know, really just capture moments for family and loved ones and just do any, I mean, we can just be rock stars with all of these tools. But as we're going through and we're ordering these things, and I'll tell you what absolutely drives me insane is when I have linked something to my Amazon account or my Facebook account or my Twitter account. And it's asking me for my, my freaking password again. And I don't know, I don't, I don't remember every password that I have. And, you know, I know that that's really hard for people to remember because we're not supposed to use the same one. They all require different things. And so, you know, what are some of the best ways that we can keep track of online passwords and usernames? Because um, certainly if we're going to be ordering our cool stuff on the fly using our app, I mean, all it takes is like getting a new phone or something and suddenly we have to remember our password again and we can't, you know, so, or maybe that's just me, but I have a feeling it's not, you know, do you have any suggestions for that? It, it's, it's not just you, it's Mark Zuckerberg. It's everybody. Mark Zuckerberg, was, uh, his Twitter account was hacked this year. And the reason wow. I think his Twitter account was hacked was because in 2012, he had used the same. Now, there's, you know, obviously we don't know exactly what happened, but they pieced together that probably he was in the LinkedIn hack of 2012. Mm. And nobody changed passwords from that. And he used the same password there as he did for Twitter because these are obviously not his important social media sites, right? He likes, uh, what was that one called? The social media that Mark Zuckerberg called likes? I can't remember. But he likes that one and not the other one. So he had just kind of done that. And he used the same one and they were able to hack into his Twitter account, which he hadn't used since 2013 or something. So it's not wow. just we are all guilty of it. And it's funny because you can you can see how many tech people will write that that horrible, guess what? I got hacked and here are the uh, horrible things that I did that let this happen because it's so easy to do horrible things. Um, yeah. 
the worst horrible thing that you can do in this category is to use the same password over and over again. Most of us have like five. We have mm -hmm. five passwords we use over and over again. And sometimes we get really clever. Like last year it was your kid's name 2012. And now it's <laughs> kid's name 2014. And guess what? It's 2016. Ha ha. So that's extra special like secret. No, it's not. <laughs> they understand these <laughs> They're things. They're on to you. They're on to you. And um, so we use the same passwords over and over again. Very simple passwords. We share them with others. These are things that we do that we can't do anymore, period. We don't do that annoying um, double authentication thing because it takes too long. We have to do it. So the first thing you need to do is enable every single place you can that two-factor authentication. Every single time. Mm -hmm. And that's that annoying thing where it says, we're going to text a number to your phone and then you have to put that code in there. And, but that elevates the amount of security on that by like 97%. I've been mm -hmm. in sessions and I've gotten a text saying that someone's trying to get into your uh, Amazon account because um, they knew that it was from an unauthorized uh, site and they didn't have my code. So they can get in, but those are the things you need. The second thing you need to do is a unique password for every single site you visit. Oh a unique God. password for every single site you visit. If you look at my registrations, I'm probably at at least 600 different sites. And every single one of those has to have a unique password. There is zero chance that I can remember all those. Even if I have every trick, there's zero chance. So I use a tool called LastPass, which is a password management system. When you sign up for LastPass, you press a button that says, do a security challenge and it will sweep through your computer in about five minutes, no, two minutes. Come up with every username and password you've ever used on that computer. Wow. It will make you nauseated how many times your dog's name shows up on the list. <laughs> and it, it, it's really not your fault. That's, that's all you've been able to do is just kind of keep up with them and, and things like that. Um, the look on my husband's face when I ask him, when I'm trying to fix something on his computer and I say, what is your Apple password? The look on his face is horrifying because he doesn't use those systems and he has to remember which of the six passwords he uses over and over again and when he changed it and what this one is and whether it's a capital I or a little M or what have you. The look is horrifying and we need to do that. So LastPass will do all this for you. It will sweep through your computer, save everything, and then it'll tell you, hey, these 97,000 passwords suck, for lack of a better word. And yeah. it'll say, let's change it. So it'll go through there and help you figure out which ones are weak, which ones are duplicates, and which ones need changing because of a breach or something like that. Nowadays, whenever I register anywhere, I just press a button to generate a new password. It's automatically saved with that. And because LastPass is on every device, I can get it from every single site I visit. LastPass is one of the, it's not foolproof. In fact, it was hacked in a very big way in 2000, I think it was 2015. Mm -hmm. um, according to tech experts, uh, and according to, according to tech experts, the, the main defenses that they had held. So it was a huge attack, huge breach, but they held their ground, which is what you want. Everything's going to get attacked. Every In the past few years, you can't name a company that hasn't had a problem, like eBay and Adobe and LinkedIn multiple times and Yahoo multiple times. Guys, if Ashley Madison is not safe, no one is. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, well, okay, you know, so... Okay, so one of the things that I immediately started thinking of was what about password sharing? So um, I know that when I've worked with different people, I mean, even on my team, you know, it's like uh, you end up having to share usernames and passwords. And I always right. feel really weird about emailing that. And so, you know, scrolling through here, I see that there's the password sharing so that, you know, you can share this sort of thing and, it's a little safer, I'm assuming, um, when it you're sharing wonderful. it. Than it um, yeah. Molly and I use it. And so 
Molly never has access to my passwords. So I, I just give her the access through here and she can get in to anything that we share a, a need for a password for, but she doesn't ever need to worry about what my password is or when I change or whatever. It's always up to date for her and she can always get it because it's all connected. LastPass is free for the basic version or get this, $12 a year for the deluxe. I mean, it's so worth it. I pay so much more for so much less. <laughs> Yeah, I so, mean, and it's yeah. ridiculous that I haven't done this already. And it'll sweep through and find them for you, categorize them for you, help you change the ones um, and give you a score and keep you up to date. Uh, mm -hmm. It's it's something that I, you asked me earlier before we got started, you know, what can't I live without? Mm -hmm. This is one of those things. My passwords now are so complicated, it's hard for me to even read them out. So if someone right. says, what's your password? I'm like, capital G, little R, and then a hyphen, and then a drunk hyphen. You know, one of those things. Yeah. So it's, it's hard to even read them out because they're so complicated. But I never have to remember them because they're all in there. Well, so, okay. So um, speaking of questions that we had uh, before we officially got started, um, one of the ones that I brought up that I really wanted to hit on is, is we talk about apps for a leader. And... You know, I, I know that people are really concerned about making sure that they stay on top of things and uh, that they don't, you know, miss out on something that's really worthwhile to pay attention to. So are there like, a, you know, top three to five apps that, that everyone should really be paying attention to? How should they approach, um, you know, app management or, or really as leaders, um, how should they be looking at which apps to add in 2017? Well, that's, um, there's a lot of questions and answers in that one question. Uh, so let me, one of the things I wanted to mention here was that we've, we've got kind of a road that's really taking place between Microsoft and Google. And Microsoft and Google have created an both of them have created incredible infrastructures of free and pretty low cost tools around everything they do. And so the strength of those infrastructures is getting to be insane. Apple doesn't really have this kind of a, um, a grasp. It's got some amazing tools. Don't get me wrong. But, but like in terms of a work environment situation, Microsoft and Google are going nuts. They both have robust um, word processing, uh, basic office suite products. Um, Apple or Google's are all online. Microsoft's are both online and on uh, your device. So you got, you know, Google, you're pretty much going to have to work everything online or almost everything online. And Microsoft is on and offline, but they both have like everything you would need to create office documents that you need. Then they both have the incredible note taking skills. Microsoft has OneNote, which is equivalent to Evernote, which is that place where you can toss every tiny piece of information that you ever possibly need. You can toss it into these things and it'll collect them, be searchable. You can even take handwritten notes. And it'll search through those handwritten notes and let you find the words that are on that handwritten page. In mm, every one note and um, Google has Google Keep that's very similar. In the translation area, which is brand new, this is something that will help associations. It's not brand new, but the amount of learning that's going into them is mind boggling as of like last week. In Microsoft Translator, you have a tool where you can sit seven people from with seven different languages can sit in room and have be connected through this app or even online, say something in their language and appears in the language that the other person people need on their devices. Oh my in real gosh. time. Real time language processing, <laughs> more natural language. Are you writing all this down? <laughs> It's like, I mean, I, I know. I'm like reaching for my notes. I'm like, uh, oh, uh, uh, pardon me. I know we have a, but anyway, wow, it's that's amazing. amazing. And it's more yeah. natural conversations than ever before. Google has Google Translate, which will let you 
walk around the room. You can speak into it. It will speak out other languages. You can walk around the room and um, show a piece of paper, put up a piece of paper, and it'll do real-time augmented reality translations of that on your screen right in front of you. Oh, my gosh. Right there. Um, That's cooler than I even – I don't even know – I don't even know what to do with that. That's amazing. Beyond that, both Microsoft and Google are doing these these deep learning creepy things, um, but helpful um, with looking at the context. Like if you go into Google Sheets right now and put data in there, there'll be a little button down at the bottom called Explore. You press on that. Have you heard of this? Yes. You press on that and it'll analyze the data and figure out what you probably might want to ask. And then it'll let you ask in real language, like how many, uh, I do this to analyze my engagements. How many gigs did I have in California? And it'll look at the number of gigs and analyze the data rather than you having to figure out that dang formula that you never remembered how to do or whatever. Yeah. I, I, I have waited for years for something like this. And it was like a dream. It's like one of those hopeless dreams where it's yes. like, yeah, I kind of don't expect this to ever happen, but wouldn't it be nice if, and I mean, suddenly it's there and it's not a hundred percent. I mean, there's still, yeah. you still yeah. have to work and think, but, um, but it, it it's, cuts all it's kinds doing of- a lot of it for you. Yeah. Yeah. And then, uh, um, Microsoft, if you open up PowerPoint now and you have Office 365, mm-hmm. they will have a button that says something like it may be explore, it may be help or something. And it will give you suggestions and backgrounds and formatting ideas for your boring, yucky PowerPoint. Wow. It will just analyze what's on your PowerPoint and say, this is going to look better as this kind of a flow chart and do it for you. So I just want to ask people who are watching right now, um, have you have you been playing with this? Because uh, I've been running into this and it's actually it's helping me look really good. But is this one of those things? And this is for everyone who's who's watching and then um, or listening later and and Beth and for you. Is this one of those things where it's really cool right now, but eventually we're going to be able to tell immediately that somebody just went through and kind of let you know, let it figure it out how to make them look smart. Because right now I'm getting away with looking smarter than I am. So the real question is, is this the rainbow (laughs) art, word art feature that was in Microsoft Word, you know, 2003? Remember that rainbow word art? And all of a sudden, every single sign in the break room had that same... You know, at first it was like, oh, my God, that bubble writing is amazing. And then, like, by the time you're the 45th time you've seen that bubble writing, you're like, that's the rain, the word art button on Word, and we're done with that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I think you're right. I think that's an interesting point. Uh, but I think right now a uh, few of us know about it, so just uh, just manipulate it. I saw the other day somebody on a news station had used iMovie and they had these, these pop-up little cloud things that are very distinguishable. And I was mm-hmm. like, they're just using iMovie. On I, know. I know. <laughs> well, and, and then Karen here, she's, she's like, yeah, uh, yeah. yeah, I'm starting to feel the same way about some Canva designs. And I know I, I am too. And that's, that's what I mean. It's like, you know, even though, um, and, and haiku deck. So if you do a lot of presentations, yes. I was so, so in love with haiku deck and I still like, I love the way that, and if you guys haven't explored it it is really cool. However, you know, a haiku deck when you see one, like I, I think you do. And so I love it. I paid for the, the pro version of it, but I, uh, it's like, you know what it is when you see it. Yeah. And words. Yeah. uh, yeah, And word swag. Yes. I still like word swag, but I recognize that those little anchors, you know, when you see in the, the font. (laughs) (laughs) Yes. Yes. It's like going through Instagram. I always see it because, you know, we all play with the same stuff and it's like a ripple, like ripples. Another one where I was just really amazed by it. doesn't mean you're not going to see me not use Like you'll probably see me still use it occasionally because I just think it's cool, but I see everybody else thinks it's cool too. So. Yep. A lot of that going around, but yeah, I think, I think they're going to be fresh for a while. And I think, you know, we need those shortcuts. We mm-hmm. need to look professional. We need to look, make mm-hmm. it look nice. And we need those shortcuts. And yes, there are going to be two people in the room who go, yeah, 
I know what yeah, that is. I know that what that is. is. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but, you know, and they're going to say, yeah, I know what a chat book is. It's only $8 or a group book or whatever. But, you know, for most people, they're going to be like, oh, wow, that's really cool that you took the time to do this. Yeah, I and still think that's cool. That it was it was that easy for you because it's still yeah. you still have to do it. Well, and then also, I think what's really cool about that is it it creates some sort of tangible you and and tactile. You can touch a product that comes to you that you're able to open up and look at. I don't even care. Like, I mean, that's just beautiful. It's amazing. Yeah, yeah. I see. So uh, y'all have been tweeting me during this thing, and I sound really smart. Yeah. Like that's really cool. I need <laughs> to caption my life and make sure that I know that I'm really that smart. Cause I'm like, Oh, I said that. Wow. Yeah. yeah. You're kind of amazing. And I knew that when you were coming <laughs> on. So, so, um, so what about, okay. So we, we're running out of time and I want to, I want to be conscious of that, but, uh, how about this? How about, uh, tracking hours and projects because, you know, I, I know that everyone um, pretty much no matter if you work for yourself or if you work for an association or no matter what you're doing, many times we end up having to track our time and figure out where it's going. And we should, we should be able to do that. But listen, this kind of stuff, this software it can be really, really expensive. And I know working for myself, this is something where, you know, I want something that I can log it no matter where I am easily. And I want something that's not going to cost me an, an arm and a leg because, you know, I'm not made of money and I, I would rather spend it on doing something like creating groove books or something like that. So like, um, do you have any advice for us? you know, for that kind of thing? Well, uh, the, it, it's kind of a complicated question. Uh, my first reaction is uh, uh, something called rescue time. Mm -hmm. And rescue time is a system that monitors every single moment you spend on your computer and when and where and how and helps you keep track of that stuff. Now, I use something like this when I was a, I was a, um, a freelance writer for associations after I stopped being an association executive. I worked as a writer in that industry for a while, and I used it all the time. So when I would go and bill my clients because I was an hourly, um, I would just, it was very easy to see, you know, you spent a total of three and a half hours on this one document. It's all right there. It's all written out. Um, the one I use online that helps me kind of focus, but it doesn't give me that kind of a uh, fine tuning is called, um, it's called be limitless hmm. and be limitless tracks all the time I spend on different sites, which is not really a good look for me. Why? Well, no, you have excuses, though. You have excuses yes. because you have to look yes. at what new apps and all kinds of stuff. And where are you going to hear about it? These cat videos are research. <laughs> I know. They research. are. I have yes. to play in Canva because yes. I have to. It's my job. Totally. totally. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, uh, yeah. So be limitless. And plus, it's beautiful. Every oh. time I see it, it's these beautiful pictures and it says... But it's kind of Judgy McJudgerson. It says, um, you've spent three hours in social media today. Why don't you try try to focus? I'm like, why don't you try to focus? Oh wow. Oh there wow. You. Okay. So it starts to it starts to tell you what you should. Hmm. I don't it know. Does not. But there's also um one of the things that's kind of related that that is always something that that stymies me is when you get in the car and you're taking a trip and you need to do your mileage. Yeah. How annoying is it that you never remember to write it down or you have an app that you have to start and stop? I, I don't work like that. Me either. One time I started a run in Houston. I didn't stop it three months later until San Diego. <laughs> it was my best time ever. Wow. <laughs> that was intense. That was really Quite a so, three month period of time. So. <laughs> yeah, that was a, that was a good one. Um, <laughs> I use uh, tools. There are a couple of them, like Mile IQ. Yeah, that that's what I use. Every yep. single mile you have, every time you're in a car, yeah, tracks it. So you must pay the full version. Yeah, forty dollars a year because you run out of a certain. You only get so many miles, yeah. and then after that, you have to pay for the. But it's so worth yeah. it. I think it's so worth it. 
And then every single thing, it's kind of like the dating app Tinder. You can very quickly yep. swipe your finger right or left to classify things. And it hooks it up with your IRS rates and it hooks yep. it up with everything else. And now all that money that you're wasting because you're running errands for work or you're doing volunteer work, which is also uh, a write-off, some of it, um, you're just wasting it unless you classify it and then you have all the records right there. Well, it's also, I think what's really cool about that is that um, it has an area where you can add like uh, how much you paid for parking and that kind of thing. Yes. And for me, I found I found that really interesting because I was like, wow, it might be, it really might be worth it to figure out whether I should park on the street or in a garage or like, because if you're going to one particular place a lot that you can see that add up. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Very much so. Awesome. Well, okay. So 256. Everyone, if you have a question, please, we, we're running out of time. Uh, I definitely, and Karen, okay, right here, there's going to be uh, a big list of the tools we've talked about today at some point, I hope. Yes. And Lara, Lara is going to be all over that. Um, favorite productivity app. Okay. That's, that's, that's a really great question. But I also want to ask you a question as we are heading into 2017. Is, you know, do you do any sort of resolutions or goal making as you approach a new year? Or how are you, how are you going into that? I know, I realize that this may depart from exactly what we're talking about with apps, but I'm wildly curious about this. Because I know that for you, you have to organize, and I know you have great help, but um, you have to organize all kinds of travel and what it is you're trying to do with your business and how you're how you're advancing and, and who you know making time for your life and your you know so you've got a lot that's going on and I guess I'm just really curious to see what your goal making or um, you know resolution making looks like as you wrap up one year and go into another. The key word there is efficiency, mm -hmm. right? So I have great systems. My my manager and I have worked very hard to find software and, and apps and systems that pull us together, but we're constantly reevaluating them. We were just talking the other day about um, it's very, very, very hard to uh, to keep up with all these uh, these wonderful efficiencies, and we constantly have to reevaluate them. For example, we... We, we were at a point where she was duplicating work and I didn't know she was duplicating work and she was very overwhelmed and I said, wait a minute, what are you duplicating? Let's cut it out. Let's set up some automation things. So always, 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 we just talked about this. Our goal setting has to do with how to be more efficient and how to, if we're having to put travel information in more than one area, why? What apps, what systems can we make? By the way, I know if you can't see me, I'm doing really fun things with my hands right now. I'm seeing you pretty well right now. Like you've been, you've been moving for a while. So this is good. <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh, Mary Kay just said she just wrote a loaded be limitless. And it says, how about a short nap? See why I love it. <laughs> um, but I, I think always as, uh, as executives, when we're faced with these, these just potholes of time wasting mm -hmm. and they are just stopping our team and stopping us stop go back and reevaluate how technology or how something can be more efficient in that pothole because i bet there's some solution so we are going into the new year thinking you know contracts one of them i think we're going to do a contract system that has beautiful contracts and, and very easy to go back and forth. Rather than cutting and pasting from a Word doc to a PDF, we're gonna right. make that switch and go more efficient, go more streamlined, go more uh, attractive. And it's gonna cost us a little bit more money, but I think we're gonna save money and have a better system in the long run. So yes, those are, my, those are the types of goals that we have and those are the ways we stop and say, technology can help this with this how mm -hmm. you know what's interesting is i started using uh proposify and it's uh what i just signed up for yeah it's amazing it's really yeah. saved a lot of time and uh and i love it because you can save little segments and then move them around and spew you can see when when it's been opened you can see when it's been signed and i love it i absolutely love it it saves so much time 
Yeah, um, that's that's the one I uh, just sent her a link to yesterday, and I think I'm just going to jump in and do it. And um, But it's little things like that, that you go from this really awkward area where you're just kind of like cutting and pasting or working off a spreadsheet or sending 50 emails. Stop and say, this doesn't seem to be Mm-hmm. How have other people solved this problem? And let's try to find a way to break that barrier. Though that's that's all about how we constantly improve, and we're looking to improve for 2017. Well, do you? Okay, so do you have a? Um, that's that's for your business, for the personal side, because we all have. I mean, we we sort of balance things. And I know your business is your personal life too, but but. <laughs> um, for your personal life and, and uh, is, are there like meditation tools or anything like that, that, that you, you know, think that leaders should pay attention to? Um, I am such, such, such not a meditator. Like I get so <laughs> irritated when you do yoga and then they ask you to think about your day. I'm like, Oh my God, if I wanted to think about my day, I wouldn't go to work out. Just make me breathe <laughs> hard and I have to go. I have to go. People. So yes. that's not good for me. Um, but one of the things that I that I found very helpful to keep up as a professional, and I think association execs can do this too, and and I kind of use it as a a, a fun way to to meditate almost on stuff. I use Flipboard, which mm. has been around for a long time, and I create my own magazines. Right, so every second that I have a few minutes, I'm flipping through all kinds of articles that I've curated from all kinds of topics that I've curated. So if you are in the architecture industry or if you are in the realtor industry, you could put together all kinds of feeds from all these realtor blogs and things, flip through, and then you can save them for later. So I have this huge magazine uh, thing so that when I when I go back and I'm writing blogs or I'm doing newsletters or I'm trying to find a tool for somebody, I'm like, oh, I found this, I remember it from somewhere and I keep it all in one place and I just, that to me is very, uh, very helpful to have all that information that I've curated, that I understand, that I'm looking for in one place so that when I have a few minutes to spare, I'm reading articles. I love it. I, I love it. Isn't. So what do you guys think? I have to say, this has been amazing, and I'm sorry that I kept you over time, but I, I really appreciate you staying a little bit over the hour. Um, I hope you've had fun with this. I hope that you've learned something new that will help you, your association, your association clients in the future. If you like association chat, then I hope that you'll like us, follow us, go out on the social media, you know, every channel and share the love, share it with a friend, be a nerd, do it. You know, you want to. Um, if you want to continue the discussion, you can join the Association Chat Facebook group and we'll have regular updates there. You can ask questions, you can find out about upcoming topics. Next week, we have a break. There, we are not going to have an association chat. I know it's sad, but trust me, it, it's it's good for all of us to have a little bit of a break. And then on the 3rd, on January 3rd, we're going to be talking about the six elements that every association needs to own the future. It sounds in- interesting, doesn't it? It's very exciting, kind of mysterious. I'm going to let you think about that. But as we go into the holiday break, we've got some great apps to think about. Thank you, Beth. Um, you get great apps. You can track your time. You can be told to take a nap, obviously. Um, it's all of this great stuff. I want you to have a wonderful and a safe holiday break with your family and your friends. And we'll see you all next year. Happy holidays from your friends at Association Chat. Happy holidays from me. And see you next time. Bye, guys. Bye, everybody. I love this. Beth, thank you so much. Well, thank you for having me. This was fun. And I got to I got to wear the hat and the shirt. Yeah, I know. It was awesome. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Karen. Nerdy. Thanks, everybody. Bye.